Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. In this one, we're gonna talk about arrays and how they're used and you know, what is the point of arrays and you know, everything there is to know about it. Now, the reason I wanna talk about arrays is that it is one of the most commonly used elements when it comes to PineScript, especially in like more complicated uh, indicators. And obviously, as you know, my goal is to help you to understand these uh, trading view indicators. So that's why, uh, you know, we've been talking about PineScript a lot more recently. So, you know, arrays are actually a very useful thing because in PineScript, arrays allow you to actually uh, store information and, you know, you can do a lot of interesting stuff with it. So what I'm going to do in this video is kind of introduce you to arrays a little bit, uh, you know, show you how they work and what is the point of them. And then we're going to, you know, maybe talk about it more in future. And, you know, when, when we get to, you know, because we, we, when we get to doing live scripting and live actually creation of these trading indicators, uh, we'll, you'll see how it's used actually in action. Anyways, with that being said, uh, let's get into it. So arrays are actually uh, are started by just defining an array. The way you define an array is that you give it a name. For example, I'm just going to call it numbers. Okay, let's just use all caps. Okay, and then you just start it with a, a new function called array uh, new and then you just give it the type. So again, we got Boolean type, box type, color, float, uh, integer. The most common use is floating because, well, that's just like what people use really to store like numbers and things like that. And with float, you can store decimal numbers, right? So uh, with the when you actually build the array, you have two different val uh, like, you know, uh, things that you can add basically two different uh, parameters that you can add to this array float. So one's the size, the initial one, and the second one's the initial value. So the size is essentially how big is that array. So if you leave it at nothing, that is going to be like basically unlimited array. In a sense, it's going to be, I think it, there's a maximum amount in PineScript that is 100,000. And then the initial value is going to be the value that you wanted to give give it. Now, again, we're going to leave all of this empty because I want to explain exactly like how does an array work. If you're familiar with a py a Python a little bit, uh, the way uh, like, you know, Python, like the way you define a list in Python is using a variable and just a bunch of numbers or stuff in a bracket, right? So for example, like, you know, for example, the way again, this is Python, not PineScript, but I just want to show you what do I mean by this. So if you want to have a list of numbers, uh, you know, this is how it works in Python, you know, like just like that, like, you know, you just have a bunch of numbers in these, you know, in this bracket, All right? So, and there's no way for you to do this in PineScript and that's why we use arrays, all right? So with that being said, let's go back and, you know, go back to array. So I see we got a new array. We have, we don't have a size for it. That means that, you know, we just want to kind of keep that open ended and then we don't have an initial value. You know, this is something that you can add in case if you want to like immediately define uh, like a number or value inside an array that you just started, you know, that you just built. But, you know, most of the times people leave it empty. Uh, so with that being said, let's go ahead and actually get like a little bit open on this. So the next thing you want to do with an array is that, you know, uh, you want to maybe replace a number. So actually, actually, let's let's first add a number to an, this array. So the way you add a number to an array, let's actually comment it out so that you actually you understand this. So define an array. There you go. So the way you actually add a value to an array is use the push. Okay, add a value. So the way you do this is you use array dot push. And then you just add the you give it the array ID. In this case, it's numbers, right? So this is the array that we defined. And then you give it the value, you know, whatever you want to add, for example, in this case, I want to add the number 10.24 um, to this array. So just like that, we added this number to this array. Right. So just like that, we added that. OK. And another thing you can do is you can actually access this array. So the way you uh, the way arrays work is that they they are basically a list. Let's actually add a bunch of stuff to this array. OK, so let's just add like maybe four different numbers. For example, I'm going to call this 24, 62, um, 28. All right. So we just added four numbers to this array, right? So the way you access, because when you actually have these numbers, the way they're stored is like this. So they're stored basically at, 
you know, by in order, basically. The, the first one is 10, you know, the second one is basically 24. Um, let me just add that real quick. Again, as you see, just that's the point, right? The, the, the third one is 62.24, and the last one is 28.24 right so that's how they're like stored basically but the way you access it is that the way like in every programming language the way these things are indexed is not from one from zero so the way you count is as zero one two three so that's how you access these numbers all right so again that's just something you want to remember because that's called indexing not um like not you're not accessing based on the order but you're accessing based on the index of it so the way you get a value, let me just comment this out. Okay, so the way you get a value inside an array is that you use array.get. Let me just make sure it's not, uh, there you go. Array.get, and then you go, you choose the array ID as you see, we got the syntax here. So we got the ID, so I'm just gonna go for the numbers. That's the array ID that we defined, right? And then the index. So again, that is gonna be, for example, the first number, second number, third number, fourth number, whatever you wanna access. So in this case, I'm gonna go with one. So this means that it's going to access the second number. And again, you can put this in a variable. For example, you can just put this on, um, value so this can be inside a variable as well okay there you go so that way i can just assign this variable to this particular number or this location inside this array so just like that you get the value of an array now next one uh let's just, just make sure you comment this get a value inside an array the next one i want to talk about is actually um removing a value inside an array. So there are a few ways to actually remove a value. The first and most common ones is using the shift. Essentially array shift, let's just comment it, remove the last value. So this is basically how you remove the last value inside the array. So array.shift and then it's going to just give you the I ask you for the ID. Uh, so that way, basically, you remove the first value inside the array. So in this case, it would be this 1024. But, uh, like after this is removed, what we're going to be end up with is this. And then this is going to be zero. This is going to be one. This is going to be two, right? So just like that, you remove a, like, you know, a specific, you know, or the last element or the first element inside an array, all right? So another thing that you want to add, you want to remember the next one is actually get the size of an array. So this is another thing that is very used heavily, uh, you know, size of an array. Uh, the reason you want to use this, I'm going to explain why you would actually use this. This is actually one of the most commonly used things. But the way you use it is you you'd use array size and then just you know, array name or ID essentially. So the reason you want to get a size of an array is that in some cases or a lot of cases really, um, you use the array to store the values of bars, okay? And when the chart changes, for example, you, you're looking at Apple, now you're looking at uh, like in the NVIDIA, for example, these charts change. And when these charts change, the like number of bars in that array that you have in your code changes as well. So you don't know exactly how many like how many like bars are inside that array, right? So using array size, you can actually understand how big is your array and like what you can do with it. So if you want to access a certain day, for example, you know, okay, so you can like based on the number of arrays, you can go this amount back to actually access that particular data or date. So again, that's how uh, array size is used essentially just used to actually understand how many like items are inside an array especially if you're using those types of arrays and you know uh, you know you can use it for that so that is that you know that is how you use array size um, let's see one more thing that we want we talked about the push didn't we no we didn't we, let's talk about yeah we thought we talked about the push we talked about shift we talked about size which is going to give you the size of the array um, let's, we talked about get as well, which is going to get the, you know, a value, certain value inside an array. So, um, let's see what else. Actually, let's talk about the size set. So array set, let's actually do this. Array set basically sets a, sets the closed number, uh, sets a number in like a specific index. So, you know, array set. So basically let's say we have this array. 
say we got this, right? And we want to change the a particular number in this set. For example, I want to change this one, the third number, which becomes 0, 1, 2. How do we actually do this? We use the set function. So we do this by um, going and saying array set, okay? And we're going to say, uh, again, if, if you take a look at the syntax, it's going to ask you for the ID and then index and then value. So uh, for ID is going to be, for example, ID is numbers. So that's the array that we're using right now, right? Um, index is going to be two, right? Again, because we're using zero, we're saying zero, one, two, right? So that's going to be two. And then the value, basically the number that we want to change it. For example, I'm just going to change this to 99.54. So just like that, we change this value using the set array set function, all right? So just like that, guys, we uh, you know we uh, talked about arrays. Now again, arrays can be a little bit more complicated. For example, one more thing that can happen in array. Uh, one of the things you want to remember is that arrays constantly change because again, the way Pine script runs is that it runs on each bar, right? So these arrays are constantly defined each time a new bar is introduced, you, introduced to the chart. So if you want that array to not change specifically, you know, if you're using more complicated things, for example, uh, in my case, what I'm doing is I'm using arrays for uh, arrays and matrices for like a AI or a neural network, uh, you know, system. So we, you don't want that to change. You want it to be constant. So the way you use it is you use VAR uh, keyword. So for example, if you want to, let's define a new array, I'm going to call this network. Okay. So, so the way you define a new array is that you use VAR uh, float, and then we're going to, you know, have, have this, you know, bracket and then we're going to just go array new and then uh, float just like that so just like that what i did was i defined an array that doesn't specifically change it just stores its value with the first and then you know we can add more value into it obviously but again it doesn't change with the chart so that is like you know a var again uh, we talked about var in our course by the way uh, but yeah so that is var uh, or, the function basically the keyword essentially so again that's a little bit more you know more complicated use of arrays but um that's one way to go about it so if you guys want i can talk more about this but anyways i just wanted to kind of introduce you guys to arrays uh, let me know if you have any questions you can check out the links in the description if you want to look at the full course there's a full you know pine script course we will talk about all this stuff in detail so definitely check it out let me know if you have any questions guys if not i'll see you in the next video make sure you subscribe if you like this video and leave your comment if you have any questions or anything like that i'll see you in the next one guys